Okay, so I've got a copy of my work uh, copied from the network folder. Um, it's on my flash drive, and I have today's date. So this is what you need to set yourself up with. Uh, you need a copy from last time, and you rename it to today's date. Uh, so you can open up your index file and your uh, your index HTML and your uh, JavaScript file in Notepad. I'm going to open it up in the web browser. Any web browser is fine. I'm going to go with Firefox. Um, since we are closing the project and turning off the computer and coming back every time, the data behind the scenes does get deleted. Uh, even though local storage is much more of a, of a permanent storage than a plain old variable, it still gets cleaned out when you turn off the computer since we've got factory settings. It deep freezes in effect, it goes back to factory settings. Uh, when this goes on to a real device, the local storage data that we're saving will be saved to the device permanently unless they delete the app, unless they go in and they know where they're going into the settings of the operating system and clearing out the memory and such. So it does save information permanently from session to session, and we'll see the differences about that later. But in our case, every time we come in, I'm going to come here and it says no user logged in because the computer was reset. So take a moment to create an account uh, and kind of test it to make sure it works like it's supposed to since last time, which means I need to create an account. Join, and I've got my console there to give me the feedback. I'm going to sign in. I'm on the home screen. So it should behave like I expect. You've got your email down at the bottom to tell you uh, that you've logged in. I've got that feedback happening in the console, that my passwords match, all that good stuff. I'm going to also sign out. Question? Uh, I won't let you create an account. Well, make sure you're copying my copy from uh, the network folder. If your own copy is not working, just grab a copy of my project from the network folder. So testing it out a little bit more here, I'm going to go up to options and I'm going to log out just for the full effect of the process of creating the account, signing in, etc. So we spent a while uh, setting up the code for login and log out. Uh, there's still more polish that could be done to it, but this is enough for the moment to start to actually program the app now past that part of the process. We have a way to create an account, to log in, to log out. Um, and that's enough for us to start to look at the project internally past that, that sort of gatekeeper. Uh, so, the uh, I'm on PG Home, and at the moment it, it there's nothing really to do here, nothing to look at. So we have to spend a little time setting up our screens, um, PG Home screen, which will give you the options to uh, uh, save comics and view comics. Ultimately, this is a database that stores and retrieves. Uh, in inventory of comics. And we're going to save, when we were brainstorming a while ago, we're going to save the name of a comic, its year of publication, the number of it, any notes that we want, eventually photos, scanning barcodes, other cool stuff. So there's nothing, nothing to do in the project just yet. 
So we need to start to create some navigation. The back and forward button, like we see here in the browser, uh, is just for the browser. It won't exist when we're on a real device. So that means we should be creating navigation that exists uh, in the project itself. So uh, that'll be in the index.html file. Let's go ahead and open up index.html in Notepad. We've got PG welcome, the very first thing the user sees to decide sign in or sign up. We've got PG sign up, which is the process, uh, which is the screen where the user uh, fills in their information to sign up. Then we've got PG login, which is once they've got an account, they can log in with it. And then we get to PG home. <coughs> So in PG Home, I want to create some uh, navigation in here. We've got our section, which is the whole screen. We've got header, all the stuff at the top, article main content area, and footer down at the bottom. Um, let's add a new line right before header, the end of header. On PG Home, we're going to have the name of the app at the top, CBDB. Then there's the Options button. Then there's going to be a nav bar to be able to jump from a screen to screen. So that means we have the nav tag. This will be our navigation, our navigation element. Nav buttons. So we have not added nav, a nav element, to um, this project yet, but we worked with nav a little while ago when we first looked at uh, when we first looked at jQuery Mobile. In order to create a nav bar, we need a data role. Does anyone remember what the data role is for navigation bars? Nav bar. Nav bar. Yes. Good memory. Nav bar. So one word. No spaces, no dash, or anything like that. Nav, the HTML5 element nav, will have a data role of nav bar, so it behaves like a nav bar. And then our navigation buttons are a set of unordered links, a set of bullet points. Does anyone remember what the bullet point code is? An unordered list of bullet points. Anyone remember that code? UL, UL yes. So UL unordered list. These are going to be bullet points. Each bullet point is a list item. We're going to have two list items. Oops, where did I go? Two list items. I'm going to have two things that are clickable at the top. In the nav bar, in the header, I'm going to have two things to, to click on two main links. We'll have a button to save comic, save comic, and view comics. So we'll have a screen that we'll need to set up for all of the inputs about what are we saving. That'll be in a screen, save comic. Then as we start to save data to the database, in part two, we're going to get to using a database to save more complex uh, data. Um, we're going to need to retrieve that information and display it. That'll be a screen, view comics. Well, if these are going to be screens, these are going to be linked to new sections. So each list item here will have a link wrap a link around each one a tag to create an anchor which makes a link a 
A tags need the href attributes that specify where do you go when you click these links. So we're going to have href on each of these. And following our paradigm from before, we've been very creative when we give these IDs. So these will be, we'll continue to be creative and we'll call this PG Save Comic and PG View Comics. Perfect, right? Trick question? Almost perfect. There's no pound side missing. This is a common mistake um, if, if you're not quite paying attention. The, technically, the name is there, but they're not being referred to as IDs. So each of these needs the pound sign at the beginning. Because section PG Home, ID equals PG Home, href would be href equals pound PG Home. Here, we're linking to a brand new section that doesn't exist yet called PG Save Comic, PG View Comics. They're going to be referenced by IDs, so don't forget those pound signs. And then I know for myself, I always forget plural, singular. Did I call it with an S, without an S? That's easy to refer to again, but um, remember what you call these things so that you can uh, reference them again. Uh, we're going to... Um, move from screen to screen. Um, the default animation, remember, is a fade. I want to change that data transition. Maybe we'll do flow. I was doing a flip animation throughout the process of sign up. And. Um, uh, maybe we'll do, we'll see how it looks like. Uh, maybe we'll do a flow animation when we go from screen to screen of saving and viewing comics. Taking a quick look at it in the browser. This is when, uh, when we're testing this, if you do the refresh in the browser, it, it should kind of show you the result quicker than if you do run launch browser because then you have to uh, be uh, you have to sign in again remember our, our whole is logged in works but it doesn't move you from screen to screen until we put it in the actual device so I've got a button save comic view comic you can add uh, the icons and all of that later. We've got save icon view comic. If I try to click these, either nothing will happen or I'll get a message that says cannot load page. Well, that's because we need to create the pages, the, the, the screens. Each of these screens is a section, so we need to create new sections for save comic and view comic. So um, let's go over uh, past our PG home, past PG options. Before the end of our project, we've got the, the links over to the various jQuery JavaScript files. We're going to create a new section here, PG uh, save comic, PG view comic. Uh, we'll do PG view comic first. That one's a little easier to set up. Uh, PG save comic needs more setup. So we'll make the note that what follows uh, view comics screen start. There will be an ending of it. And based on what we've done previously, we can create a new section. With a data role of page, an ID of PG uh, view comics. 
And here's the part where we don't have the pound sign. We needed the pound sign up on href, but not here, because it already is marked as id equals that. <clears throat> and I just need to double check I spelled it right, pgvu comics. Yep, pgvu comics, plural. Yes? So you can only use a pound sign for a link. Most of the time what we're doing in the HTML file, yes, is using it for links. When we get to more advanced CSS, we'll also use the pound sign for CSS. So uh, we've got a section we're creating. It's, it's going to act like a page full of information, and it's got an, uh, a unique ID, PG View Comics. Uh, here I want to create also a header area and a main content area. So uh, header and article. I want the header to behave like a header, so that's got a data role. Header. And I want the header to stay stuck to the top. If we scroll away, the header might also scroll away. So here's where we had the um, data position fixed. In this header, we'll have an H1 that announces at the top of the screen what this screen is. And uh, in this screen, um, we can have it say View Comics. To see how this is uh, going so far, go ahead and save it and view it in the browser. From PG Home, you've got the two buttons. You should be able to click on uh, View Comics, and it should go to this screen. Nothing very impressive to look at just <coughs> yet, but you should see that your link from PG Home does go to PG View Comics. If it doesn't, of course, check your spelling. Make sure you put the pound sign. Uh, in the href and no pound sign in the section ID. Refresh my code. View comics. It goes to view comics. There's the animation of flow. And at the moment, I'm having to press the back button in the browser to navigate, which again, we should not assume that we will always have. So uh, we should set up a uh, navigation here um, in View Comics. We can do a little copy and paste and change it a little bit. Because from the home screen, you've got the option to go to save a comic, view a comic. But when you're in View Comic, you would have the option to save a comic and go home. So uh, that'll change our, our menu a little bit. Um, you can save yourself a little effort by copying the nav back from PG Home and pasting it into the brand new header of, of um, PG View Comics.
So I copied the nav bar from before, and it says it has the button Save Comic, View Comic. Um, I'm already in the View Comic screen, um, so uh, here's um, something. And I, here's a, a moment to pause uh, to think in terms about user experience and user interface design. Um, it's better to show you visually. If I'm at uh, this is PG Home. If I go to View Comics, at the moment, the only thing that tells me that I'm at View Comics is the title. OK. But I've got two buttons here that both seem active and usable, but I'm already in one of these screens, View Comics. I shouldn't, it shouldn't be like the button is still clickable. You've probably seen websites or apps that when you're in a certain section the button highlights to show you this is where you're at even though at the top it tells me where I'm at it's good user experience to also tell the user you're on this screen here because it would be highlighted so we have a way to highlight the the button second uh, I want to navigate back up to home screen without using the browser buttons because there will be no browser buttons when it's an app. So we need to add a new button to the navbar. The navbar will have three buttons in View Comics and Save Comics, but it'll have two buttons on home screen. So let's add a brand new button, a brand new link in PG View Comics. A new list item, a new button called Home. This needs the A tag to link it. Back to PG Home. Data transition to keep it in the same vein, the same style, the same aesthetic. So now, uh, when a person goes to PG View Comics, they're going to see the stuff there about viewing a comic, and they're going to see the nav bar uh, to go back to home or to save a new comic. There's still the issue that the button View Comics looks like it's uh, clickable, that a person can interact with it, and it shouldn't because we're already on that screen. That confuses the user. So let me show that again. If I'm on the home screen, Save Comic and View Comic are two possibilities. They're two buttons uh, that are clickable because they're not highlighted. This is a this is a thing with user experience that you've uh, looked at this um, subconsciously probably. If I go to View Comic, okay, I'm in a brand new screen. Home, Save, View. It looks like all three of them are clickable, and View Comic should not be clickable because I'm already in View Comics. But now I've got the home, which takes me home. So I want to make view comic to automatically be highlighted, to look like it's clicked, to stay automatically on, to show the person, you're here. And even though at the top of the nav bar says view comics, to have that redundancy is good to not confuse the user. And as a matter of fact, if we can set it up that view comics will be highlighted to tell them you're here, we can reuse this top header to write some other text. We won't have to use the same text twice if this will serve the purpose of being blue, being highlighted to tell you you are here, you're in the view comics. 
Now, to activate that feature so that it stays activated, it's going to be a class. And we add the class to the href to the link that we want to stay highlighted. Looking at my notes, however, I didn't write that down. So if I wanted to look up, how do I make that button be stay active? How would you perhaps reason how to figure that out? All of this is working through a certain framework. What's the name of the framework again? jQuery. Close. jQuery Mobile. jQuery Mobile, yes. We're using jQuery Mobile. Well, let's go back to jQueryMobile.com and go look up the documentation. How do I make a button stay active? I'm doing this as an exercise of, I'm going to give you these pieces of a puzzle, of course, but maybe you want to do more than beyond what we do. Well, obviously, that means you're going to read the documentation um, to learn more beyond what we've done, perhaps, or to change things what we've done. So let's take a little segue uh, to go over to jQueryMobile.com. We were here a little while ago. Uh, where do we go from here to go look up how to do things in jQuery Mobile? In about, obviously. No. Demos. Um, API documentation uh, is a little too technical for most of the things we need to do. That could be one place, however, to get like the really advanced methodologies. Usually, we'll be under demos. And we're looking at the latest version of jQuery Mobile, 145. So let's go there. So we've got the nav bar on the left or at the bottom. And I need to figure out, OK, I need these buttons to stay active. Maybe I look around and look for buttons or something. Oh, OK, buttons, CSS framework. Let's go take a look under buttons and see if we can find what we're looking for. This is the explanation of how buttons are made, basic markup, corners, great shadows, inline, mini versions, position, shadows, disabled. Here's one possibility here. Um, I could have the button set up as disabled in that it's no longer clickable. Um, other buttons that are clickable will look like you can click them. Whereas using this attribute or this value to set up disabled will prevent it from working. And to take a quick look at view source, um, notice the way this is saying a href, there's a link somewhere, there's a class, UI button, UI state disabled. So what that does is it makes the button behave that it no longer is clickable. So just to kind of try that out. Um, to see if we like it, because there's other ways to do it. To see if we like it, let's add that into our code. Let's give that a shot. Um, in, the, in the particular button that we want to disable, I'm in PG View Comics. Therefore, I don't need the PG View Comics button active. We can add the class. So a class is related to CSS. There's a built-in CSS class under View Comics. I'm just going to say what they say. UI-BTN space UI-state-disabled. Make sure there's a space between those two. So give that a shot. Save it and check your code and see if you if you if that works how you expect or works how you would like. When I go to view comics now, that's no longer clickable. So that's a possibility to do this. There's a couple other ones. I like these other ones that we'll see. This is one way we can disable a button so that it's no longer clickable. This is an indicator to the user 
you're in the screen, you can't click on that anymore. Don't worry about clicking on it anymore. Well, I went in there to buttons and I found a type of an answer. That's a button. That's a button up on the top of my, my screen here. The top of my screen, I'm setting it up as a navigation element. If I didn't exactly find what I, what I was looking for under button, I want the navigation bar to be altered at the top here is a navigation bar. Oh, we've got a whole section of navigation. Maybe what I'm looking for, I can find under the navigation documentation. Let's go look there. Pages, navigation. So it explains in a bit of a more technical JavaScript way. Ev using events and methods. It's not exactly the way that I was trying to do it. Here's a more um, JavaScript intense way to do it. So I'm showing this to show that we can do things uh, via uh, HTML navigation or JavaScript navigation. Window on navigate. We have the um, jQuery event of navigate to do stuff. It lets you check the, um, the address and direction of history and such. So the um, the the documentation uh, is set up in these different ways for you to find the different elements. And then we've also got the search at the top there. Now, uh, what's interesting is that the whole jQuery Mobile site is built in jQuery Mobile as well. Notice here we have, we can click on that search and a side panel appears. We have, um, we have a way to do side panels as well, extra information. Uh, these buttons here, these are, uh, these are list items. So there is a screen I, I forgot to forgot to look it up. I forgot to look it up myself. Sorry. Um, there is this button. Uh, there is this code about making it persist. I have it in my other notes, but just have to take a moment to find it here. Let's see. Toolbar. Nav bar. Nav bar. Nav bar. Nav bar widget. Yeah, so here it is. So BTN active UI persist. Um, so we have all of these different pieces of the puzzle, and the documentation is all here in case, well, I want to set up a flip switch and such. And even though it works the way we have it right now, when we want to make changes to these things, we often have to go back to the documentation to learn it a little bit more. And in this case, um, under navbar, near the bottom, there's an area persistent. So uh, add UI BTN, uh, UI, add class UI BTN active to their corresponding anchor. Additionally, add a class of persist to make the framework restore the active state. So in order for it to, to look like the button is active, we are currently in this screen. This is what's active. We need to add UIBTN active. So we've got disabled UIBTN active.
So you see what that does is it, um, it turns blue like it's been clicked, like it's been activated. <clears throat> I go home, I go to view. Hmm, it didn't stay. Well, we need one more thing. Persist. It needs to stay active from screen to screen. When I refreshed it in this screen, it kicked in to activate the class active. But then when I go to another screen and come back, it lost um, the focus. And when we come back, it's no longer highlighted. So the last thing the documentation says is right here, additionally, add a class of UI state persist to make the framework restore the active state each time the page is shown while it exists. So UI state persist. So here we've added technically uh, four different classes, and classes are CSS definitions, basically. Uh, we're saying that this button is going to uh, be disabled. It's no longer clickable. It's going to be active. It's going to be highlighted with whatever color we set. We haven't talked about colors yet. And that it will persist. It'll stay active from screen navigation to screen navigation. So now when I see that, if I start on home and I view it's active. When I go to a different screen, come back, still active. Now that I've got that, I kind of don't like uh, BTN disabled. It kind of then looks a little out of place, maybe. You may keep it if you'd like. I personally uh, don't like how it changes it that much. Uh, so I'm just saying what you could do is um, take back, take away the BTN and disabled and leave only active and persist. This is another way to change the aesthetic. So it's like that. So it's highlighted. It tells me I'm on that screen. I go from here to there. It's highlighted. In the browser, I get one difference here. In the browser, I get the, the, the cursor that changes to like a clicking hand like any other link, I get the click hand. Um, even there, even though it, uh, I shouldn't have to click on that anymore, I'm already on that screen. Well, remember, this is only uh, going to be something that you see in the web browser. When it goes to a real app, uh, you, there is no click finger. You just actually click on what you need to. So that's up to you to decide if you want it to be disabled as well as active and persistent. You can do all, all four of those classes if you want. I'm just going to keep, keep these two. Like I said, if we've got a button that says View Comics and it's highlighted and it stays highlighted, we're free to then use the H1 for something else. like the name of the app. Our article of the main body needs the appropriate role and class main and UI content The purpose of this whole view comics pay, or screen is that as we uh, start to save comics, as we start to save data to the database, we want to view it. So this screen will be in charge of showing the data from the database. Eventually, 
um, will will put good use to this page. For the moment, let's add a, a placeholder here. We'll say placeholder that will update via JavaScript. And our placeholder will be a div. Div is a generic container. It's a division in the screen. Uh, it's a plain old invisible container, which we can use to then um, add dynamically generated data. Eventually, we're going to show the list of comics and pictures and all that great stuff. Uh, but right now, it's going to be a placeholder. Well, in order for us to find it via JavaScript, then we want an ID. We want a unique identifier so that via the JavaScript we can write into that div. So we'll call this ID. We'll give it an ID. Div show comics table. This ID is attached to a div. So I've got the prefix div, and it's show comics table. The comics will be shown here in a table. But right now, it's just an empty placeholder. And whatever we put inside of the div, that'll go away eventually. Maybe that'll be a good thing. We'll just put a little placeholder text in here. Uh, that'll be erased dynamically. Um, we'll just put maybe a little text in there to show that something goes there. And that'll eventually be replaced by real content via JavaScript. Got our home screen, our view screen, and placeholder. Uh, we'll we'll do save comic screen. Then we'll take a break. It's going to be similar to what we did uh, under view comics. So to save ourselves a little bit of effort, we can copy the section of view comics and then tweak a few things about it. So back on our code here, I want to take. I want to copy this chunk of code from about line 123 down to 140. I want to select the comment down to the comment. I want to grab section, header, article. I want all of that. I'm going to copy it and paste it right after itself and change it to the um, Save Comics screen. PG save comic, and then we'll fix some stuff in in between. So I'm going to copy all of that, paste it, and the copy needs to be changed. Let's say um, save comic screen. This block here at the moment is the screen where we save a comic. Uh, the section ID should be then PG save comic. That should be the same name as the link, the href. Header is going to be a data roll header the same. Data position fixed the same. H1, the name of the app, that's fine. Nav UL. Okay, so then here in the nav bar, we need to change this a little bit. Since we copied it exactly over from View Comic, the class is in the wrong spot. That class that would make it active and persistent is attached to View Comic. It should be under Save Comic. So this class, you can cut it. And paste it into Save Comic.
let's take a quick look at that in the browser. If I'm at home, I can view comic. Looks good. If I go back to home, save comic. There's save comic. View comic, save comic, home. So you want to click each of those buttons to jump to the different screens just to make sure that they work. Uh, it's very common to be working on a certain task, uh, and then you just check that that task works, but then you didn't check that your other things also worked. So you should be able to go from home to save to view. So we have more content to add to each of these sections, but let's take our first break just to make sure we're all along this path here. Uh, and then when we go on, we'll, we'll add more of the actual content. 6.55, we'll take a break until 7.05, and then we'll go on.